Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Perspective. In this episode of The Perspective, we will take a look at the Pakistan Air Force's air to ground capability, which is witnessing an increment with fleet wide addition of precision guided weapons and standoff munitions. On 27th February, Pakistan Air Force retaliated against Indian Air Force strike on Balakot the previous day. In this strike, it employed its JF-17s and Mirage 3 and Mirage 5 fighters in ground strike role. The Mirage 5 aircraft dropped H-4 standoff weapons which were then guided by twin-seat Mirage 3Ds. The JF-17s employed the range extension kit Mark 83 bombs. Over last decade, Pakistan Air Force had made conscious effort to have a wider precision guided and standoff weapons delivery capability across its entire fleet. In this analysis, I will provide an overview of various precision guided and standoff air to ground weapons targeting pods of the Pakistan Air Force and the aircrafts which employ them. Pakistan Air Force operates five different types of fighter aircraft. Of these three, that is F-16, Mirage 3 and Mirage 5 are of Western origin while JF-17 and J-10C are of Chinese origin. Hence, F-16s, Mirage 3 and 5 rely on Western air to ground weapons while J-10C which has just entered service relies exclusively so far on Chinese weapons. JF-17 on the other hand has already seen some incorporation of Western and non-Chinese air-to-ground weapons. Let's start with air launch cruise missile capability. The principal air launch cruise missile of the Pakistan Air Force is RAD or Haft 8 missile. The missile has a range of 350 km which gives it a considerable standoff capability. There is circumstantial evidence to suggest that RAD missile is based on a South African missile known as Multipurpose Standoff Weapon or MUPSAW. It was manufactured by Daniel Company which historically has a strong track record of working with Pakistan. In this image, you can see a cheetah aircraft of the South African Air Force dropping the MUPSAW missile. The visual evidence available so, so far shows the RAD ALCM being carried and tested by Mirage 3 series of fighters which have undergone ROSE 1 upgrade. Then we also have this beautiful painting of a Mirage 3 DP with RAD missile featured next to it. Uh, though I haven't seen a live version of this combination. Pakistan has also developed a longer range version of RAD missile termed as RAD-2. Apart from the range, the other difference between RAD-1 and RAD-2 is the design of its tail section. Some sources claim that this redesign of the tail section has been done to allow JF-17 fighters to carry the RAD-2 missile. Uh, here we have a grainy image of RAD-2 missile being tested uh, by a ROSE-1 upgrade Mirage 3D fighter. Now let's come to the anti-radiation missiles. The principal anti-radiation missile of the Pakistan Air Force is the Brazilian Mar-1 missile with a 6200 km range. The missile has a passive and home on jam capability. And uh, as per the SIPRI uh, arms transfer trade register, Pakistan had ordered about 100 such missiles from Brazil. While the Pakistan sources say that MAR-1 missile can be employed by Mirage 3, 5 and JF-17 aircraft, the visual evidence so far points to only JF-17 being able to employ the missile. This picture taken from a video uh, of Pakistan Aeronautical Complex shows JF-17 with 2 into MAR-1 missiles. Here again uh, you have the MAR-1 missile displayed as part of weapons package of a JF-17 aircraft. The SIPRI database also talks about Pakistan having acquired CM-102 supersonic anti-radiation missiles from China. 
However, so far there is no confirmation of it from Pakistani sources or any visual data uh, of this missile. Again, uh, about 100 such units have been uh, ordered uh, by Pakistan Air Force from China. The missile has passive radar homing, home on jam and also inertial navigation system. Coming to anti-ship missiles. Earlier, the anti-shipping role within Pakistan Air Force was the responsibility of AM-39 exhausted uh, equipped Mirage uh, VPA-3 fighters of number 8 squadron Hydras. The anti-shipping role has now been taken over by JF-17 fighters which are equipped with the Chinese C-802A anti-ship missile. As per SIPRI trade register, Pakistan has imported 100 such missiles from uh, China. The missile has a range of about 150 kilometers and comes with inertial, uh, inertial navigation with active radar homing in terminal phase. Here is a close-up of C-802A anti-ship missile on innermost uh, wing pylon of a JF-17 fighter. New addition to Pakistan Air Force's anti-ship missile repertoire is supposed to be the Chinese CM-400 AKG missile. This is a supersonic anti-ship missile. There are no definite numbers available with respect to its range and velocity. The range is supposed to be in 250 to 300 kilometer bracket with, with velocity in Mach 2 to Mach 3 range. Around 100 such missiles are supposed to have been imported by Pakistan Air Force from China. Uh, let's take a look at the unguided weapons. Pakistan Air Force uses four main types of general purpose bombs which vary in their mass from 227 kg to 925 kg. All of them are sourced from America. Of these, Pakistan has modified the 459 kg Mark 83 bomb with the range extension kit and converted it into a uh, precision guided munition. Uh, here is an image which shows all the general purpose bombs in the PF inventory. Uh, you can make out uh, the relative size of each bomb with respect to others. First up, we have the 227 kg low drag Mark 82 bombs. Here you can see they have 16 dropping 12 of these bombs. We have a JF-17 equipped with two Mark 82 bombs. Next, we have the Mark 82 a Snake Eye High Drag Bomb, uh, which is basically a Mark 82 bomb with a retarding device in its tail, which slows down the deployment of the bomb. This allows the attack aircraft to drop the bomb from very low air level and exit before it impacts the ground. This uh, beautiful image shows a Mirage 5EF Rose 3 aircraft of the Pakistan Air Force armed with Mark 82 Snake Eye bombs. Again, uh, you can see uh, the retarding device uh, deployed in Mark 82 Snake Eye bombs uh, being deployed by a Mirage 5 Rose 3 upgrade aircraft. Here's another beautiful shot of probably the same Mirage 5 Rose 3 fighter as in previous slide, dropping Mark 82 Snake Eye retarded bombs. The fighter has also deployed flares to guard against shoulder launch surface to air missiles, uh, meaning the bombs are being dropped from a relatively low altitude. Here we can see a 459 kg Mark 83 bomb displayed as part of inventory of JF-17. It is also deployed uh, by F-16 and Mirage 5s can carry it under their centerline pylon. At 9.25 kg, Mark 84 is the heaviest general purpose bomb in Pakistan Air Force's inventory. Earlier, it could be carried only by the F-16, but it seems that the innermost uh, wing pylon of JF-17 has been strengthened from block 2 onwards to carry this munition. 
Uh, before we come to guided munitions, let's take a look at the targeting pods used by the Pakistan Air Force, which are critical for guidance of laser guided bombs. When the Pakistan Air Force received F-16s from USA, they did not have precision guidance capability. Pakistan Air Force adapted the French Thompson CSF Atlas II pod for use on F-16s. It gained this capability in 1987 when number 9 squadron adopted the Atlas II pod. However, Atlas II performance is limited to only daytime and clear weather and cannot be used at night or in bad weather. As of now, uh, some uh, older F-16s in Pakistan Air Force inventory use the Thompson CS CSF Atlas II pod. The latest addition to Pakistan's inventory of targeting pods is the Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod from USA. As per US Air Force data, uh, this highly advanced targeting pod provides high definition mid-wave forward looking infrared, dual mode laser, visible light high definition TV, laser spot tracker, laser marker, video data link and a digital data recorder. Pakistan Air Force most likely has between 37 to 40 of these targeting pods. Uh, here is a uh, snap of PAF uh, F-16 Block 52 with Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod and GBU-10 Laser Guided Bombs. SL Pod has been uh, developed by a Turkish firm known as Asil San. In 2016, Pakistan Air Force signed a contract for 8 such pods with Turkish firm for approximately $25 million to arm its JF-17 fighters. As of now, Pakistan Air Force most likely has 8 or 16 such uh, targeting bots in its service. Uh, here you can see a JF-17 with SL pod mounted on its centerline pylon. Fourth type of targeting pod in Pakistan Air Force service is the Chinese WMD-7. It is employed exclusively on the JF-17 aircraft. This pod has uh, infrared television and laser system. As per SIPRI Arms Register Database, 150 such pods have been imported by the Pakistan Air Force from China. Uh, here is a WMD-7 targeting pod displayed along with a JF-17 from Pakistan's number 16 Black Panther Squadron. Now let's come to the precision guided munitions. Uh, to start with, a BLU-109 is a hardened penetration bomb and to quote Wikipedia, it is intended to smash through concrete shelters and other hardened structures before exploding. The casing is made of 1 inch steel to allow to penetrate hardened shelters. If you add a JDAM uh, guidance kit to BLU-109, you get GBU-31 V 3xB bomb. Or uh, if you add a laser gu guidance kit to it, you get GBU-24 Paveway 3. As we will see, Pakistan Air Force operates both the JDAM and laser guided uh, variety of these bombs. So here you have the GBU-24 Paveway 3. This is the heaviest precision guided bomb in Pakistan Air Force inventory. This is basically used for penetration of hardened targets and it is employed only by the F-16s. The number of such uh, bombs in Pakistan inventory is unknown. The blue color round uh, in the picture is GBU-24 shown here along with Block 52 F-16. The underlying bomb on which the laser guidance kit is attached is the BLU-109 as I explained earlier, which is a special round meant for destruction of hardened targets. This sequence of pictures show how the GBU-24 bomb functions. It first penetrates the hardened structure and then explodes when within the structure. The next heaviest smart munition in Pakistan Air Force's inventory is GBU-10, which weighs around 907 kg. This is also a laser guided weapon and again employed only by F-16s. About 300 to 400 of the type have been imported by Pakistan Air Force from USA. 
here we have a beautiful uh, picture of uh, a F-16 BM dropping two GBU-10 laser guided bombs. Uh, another beautiful aerial uh, shot of a Block 52 F-16 carrying two GBU-10 LGBs. The uh, yellow colored arrow points to a sniper ATP for guiding these weapons. GBU-12 paved with 2 is the lighter weight and more widespread of the laser guided bombs in Pakistan Air Forces inventory. It is used by both F-16 and JF-17s. A uh, SIPRI database says Pakistan has 800 to 1000 of these types, again um, imported from USA. Uh, the image shows a JF-17 with uh, GBU-12 LGB. The yellow arrow points to a Turkish SL pod targeting pod for guiding these bombs. Pakistan Air Force has also ordered a decent quantity of JDAMs which uh, rely on global positioning system and inertial navigation to strike their target. These are true fire and forget weapons because once launched, these don't require the involvement of the host aircraft. These are again employed in uh, PA service by F-16s. So JDAM is basically a guidance kit which you strap onto a general purpose bomb and convert it into a smart and standoff munition. Uh, here we have a Block 52 F-16 armed with a combination of uh, JDAMs and GBU-10 LGBs. I'm not sure about the underlying general purpose bomb on which uh, the JDAM kit has been put in this specific case. However, uh, this image shows the versatility of F-16 as a platform where it is carrying a mix of uh, air to ground uh, weapons as well as uh, beyond the visual range uh, air to air missiles. Uh, Pakistan has developed a range extension kit for its dumb bombs which converts them into guided weapons. While it is claimed that the range extension kit can be used on Mark 80 series of bombs, so far it has been seen as adapted to 454 kg Mark 83 bombs. REK Mark 83s were deployed by JF-17s during uh, Operation uh, Swift Retort on 27th February 2019. Here you can see a REK Mark 83 bomb uh, in flight during trials. You can make out the wings being deployed and the underlying Mark 83 bomb with add-on uh, uh, range extension kit. Here we have a JF-17 with two uh, range extension kit Mark 83 bombs. A unique feature of these bombs is that they are attached upside down to the aircraft pylons. Once the bombs are released, they flip over and then the wing section comes uh, on top, wings are extended and the weapon glides to its target. Uh, this beautiful painting uh, depicts a JF-17 of the number 16 squadron releasing REK Mark 83 bombs during Operation Swift Retort on 27 February 2019. Interestingly, you can see uh, that one bomb has deployed its glide wings while the other one is still upside down and yet to roll uh, into correct position to deploy its bombs, sorry, to deploy its wings. While REK Mark 83 have been seen only on JF-17 so far, this image taken from a 2019 video on the Pakistan Air Force shows a REK Mark 83 bomb being loaded on central pylon of a Mirage 5 uh, fighter. <coughs> then we have the AGM-65 Maverick. Now this was a bit of surprise for me. While I knew Pakistan Air Force had got a small consignment of Maverick missiles with initial uh, lot of F-16s, I thought these would be retired by now given their age. But here you can see the missile on the latest Block 52 F-16. The AGM-65 Maverick has a range of 22 km and the warhead size varies depending on the missile variant. 
it is a laser guided missile variant and quantity in service with the pakistan air force is not known this is a slightly old uh, image of pakistan air force where you can see the agm65 missile on display as part of weapons package of uh, f16 uh, in this image you can also make out the mark 82 snake eye retarded bombs and gbu12 laser guided bombs in the background you can also see a f7 a pg fighter aircraft the chinese copy of mig 21 here is an old picture of an f16 uh, firing a maverick missile at a training range which appears to be somewhere in usa h4 standoff weapon is basically pakistani name for south african raptor 2 uh, made by daniel systems a single unit weighs 1200 kg and has a range of uh, about 120 kilometers it is employed mainly by mirage 5 fighters in this image you can see a mirage 5 equipped with h4 standoff weapon missile on uh, its center line pylon it gives you an idea about the dimensions of uh, this standoff weapon so basically this is a tv guided weapon the operator has a video link through which it can see the live video feed relayed by the camera in nose of the missile using this feed the operator can guide the missile towards its target but then it also means that uh, the operator has to uh, keep uh, engaging with the bomb uh, till its terminal phase uh <coughs> sorry uh here you can see the targeting image from an h4 bomb which was dropped by pakistan air force mirage 5 during operation swift retort on uh, 27 february 2019 so during operation swift retort h4 standoff weapon was dropped by a single seat mirage 5 pa aircraft while it was guided towards its target by an operator sitting in rear seat of a two seat mirage 3d a aircraft so it took two uh, fighter aircraft to drop and target a single uh, h4 uh, standoff weapon uh, these are remains of an h4 sow in bimber pakistan occupied kashmir on 27 february when uh, pf attacked uh, indian army installations what you see here are two rocket motors which give it the extended range after western precision guided munitions in pakistan air force service let's have a look at the chinese pgms here you can see lt2 and lt3 laser and satellite guided bombs and wmd7 targeting pod first up we have the lt2 uh, which is one of the main laser guided bombs in use with the chinese air force pakistan air force is supposed to have imported 7700 to 800 of this type for uh, for use on jf17 this is a 500 kg class bomb and relies on laser guidance lt3 is further evolution of lt2 with dual guidance that is it has both uh, the laser guidance and satellite navigation uh, this is uh, broadly speaking chinese equivalent of the american jdam uh, standoff weapon again P paf is supposed to have imported 700 to 800 of this type for uh, employment on jf17 depending upon the velocity and altitude of the launch aircraft this 1000 class bomb has a potential range of up to 24 kilometers LS6 is a glide bomb with satellite navigation capability depending upon again velocity and altitude of the launch aircraft this 1000 class uh, bomb has a potential range of up to 60 km this is also employed by JF17 then we have cluster munitions pakistan air force employs three types of cluster bombs 
CBU Mark 20 is an American cluster bomb which dispenses 255 anti armor bomblets. PSD 1 has been developed by uh, Pakistan Air Weapons Center and is supposed to be uh, similar to American CBU Mark 20. PSD here stands for Programmable Submunition Dispenser. The third cluster bomb type in service with PAF is the Hijara CBU also known as Top Attack Submunition Dispenser 1 or TSD-1. It is uh, supposedly manufactured by National Development Complex for Pakistan and is broadly similar to a CBU Mark 20 in its characteristics. Here you can see a Mirage uh, 5 uh, EF Rus 3 aircraft armed with uh, a plethora of uh, TSD-1 uh, some munition dispenser. Here is a close up of the same uh, Mirage 5 Rose 3 aircraft, and uh, it is carrying 10 such cluster bombs. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, visually, it is difficult to tell the difference between PSD 1 and TSD 1 cluster bombs. So, if anybody has a clue, please do mention in the comments section. We have the uh, F7PG of the PEF equipped with two cluster bomb units. Again, difficult to tell which type of cluster bombs are these from the uh, picture itself. Uh, then we finally come to the runway denial bombs uh, in PEF service. So, Pakistan Air Force uses two types of runway denial or runway penetration bombs. One is the French Durandal bomb. In this picture, the yellow colored arrow is pointing towards the Durandal bomb. It weighs 200 kg and has uh, a primary warhead of 100 kg along with a secondary charge of 15 kg. It is used by JF-17 and Mirage 5 fighters in PEF service. Now in this beautiful image, you can see the Durandal runway penetration bomb being carried by a Rose 3 upgraded Mirage 5 EF of the PEF. The other penetration bomb is Pakistan manufactured Hafr 1. Uh, it is seen here being carried in a pair under each wing of a JF-17. With 200 kg mass and 100 kg primary warhead, it has similar parameters like Durandal runway denial bomb. Now, apart from all the weapons mentioned in the presentation so far, what now remains to be seen is the air to ground weapons package which comes along with J-10C fighters. It will for sure have the same set of laser guided and satellite navigation bombs as employed by JF-17. But being a medium class fighter, uh, it is qualified to carry other weapons as well. And we might see more Chinese uh, uh, bombs and missiles in service with Pakistan Air Force in future. For example, uh, will the J-10C uh, bring with it the capability to fire the supersonic YJ-91 anti-radiation missile, which is basically a Chinese copy of Russian KH-31 missile and is also operated by the Indian Air Force. Uh, in this image, you can see a J-10 uh, equipped with two YJ-91 anti-radiation missiles, uh, two LT-2 laser guided bombs, a self-protection jammer, and a data link pod to guide the YG-91 ARMs. We need to wait and watch and see the kind of weapons package that comes with J-10. To conclude, uh, as India invests heavily in modern surveillance radars and medium to long range surface to air missile assets, the Pakistan Air Force is adding standoff and precision guided munition capability across its entire fleet to even the odds. This will present a challenge to India's air defense network as uh, Pakistan Air Force will attempt to hit high value targets outside the air defense envelope of Indian surface to air missile and gun based assets. Further, Pakistan Air Force will also employ long range anti radiation missiles and satellite navigation bombs to neutralize India's long range surveillance radars to, to downgrade its air defense network. Similarly, it will also attempt to take out fire control radars of medium and long range surface to air missile batteries to render them inoperable. India's air defense ground environment system will have to factor this progress 
in pakistan air forces capability as it as it adds ground based air defense assets long range surface to air missile systems will become a critical requirement for india going forward thank you for watching this episode of the perspective if you like the content please do share and subscribe to the channel good day